kind of music in America called soul. Perhaps having the greatest impact on popular music today is the soul sound of Aretha Franklin. In different periods of our history, it's been called different things. Spirituals, jazz, blues, rhythm and blues, gospel. It's a kind of music with intensity of feeling that bridges the gap between religion and entertainment. And whereas Detroit is proud of its native daughter, and whereas she's everybody's soul sister, therefore I, Jerome P. Cavanaugh, mayor of the city of Detroit, do hereby proclaim Friday, February the 16th, as Aretha Franklin Day. Aretha, on behalf of the editors of Cashbox and its publisher, George Albert, I take great pleasure in presenting to you the Cashbox Achievement Award for 1967. You finished first in singles, first on albums, and first in rhythm and blues. Aretha also won all the awards available to a female vocalist in Record World magazine. can really say, right? And that is looking out over the morning rain. I used to feel so uninspired. And when I knew I had to face another day. Critic is my husband and manager, Ted White. What she projects is honestly what she feels. And she has the ambition and the ability to communicate it to others in an enjoyable manner. I mean, it's kind of hard to sit and listen to Aretha without patting your foot or without smiling or giving up a tear or something. She reaches that common denominator in everybody that needs to be reached by a Vocalist, I guess. I've still got to find out who and what I really am. I don't know yet. I'm trying to find the answer. Franklin, 
who um, has taken his program to many of the major auditoriums across the country, in fact, just about all of them. There's one unique thing about um, gospel songs. They always sell. There's no date on them. It's a church type of singing, religious type of singing. It has a universal appeal because it says something that most people feel and uh, most people respond to it because of its uninhibited expression. Most people don't know it. I don't realize it. But Aretha is still a gospel singer. producer at Atlantic Records, Jerry Wexler. Uh, there's a much stronger influence of gospel in contemporary rhythm and blues or soul music than there is of blues. For every 12-bar blues pattern, you might find, you know, 10 gospel patterns. They are on different chord progressions and with a somewhat different feeling. The first one I'm playing is gospel to me. a jazz pianist, but I'll get as close to it as I can right. for you. Let me see. Well, there are more passing chords in the gospel than there are in the other two. The jazz, I think, would be more fingering. As much soul, it could contain as much soul, but more fingering than chords, I think.
from a singing family. My brother Cecil is assistant minister, and we sing together at church. of singing that we call gospel singing is a kind of a tradition among, traditional type of thing among Negroes. Uh, it seemed to have uh, originated in the South, Southern Negro churches, and of course when the Negro began to migrate to the Middle West and the North and the East, he took his music with him. Um, Aretha uh, kind of inherited that uh, tradition, that religious culture. He coached me a lot in uh, singing, taking my time and working with the song, different things like that. And uh, after traveling with him, I, uh, I gained a lot of experience on the road with him. And then um, I decided I wanted to change fields. So I let him know, and uh, he felt that this was what I wanted to do, and this is what I should do, and that he would help me as much as he could to get into the field of rhythm and blues and pop music. Okay. Mm -hmm. recording session is engineer Tom Dowd and Jerry Wexler. We do head arrangements. We don't work with charts because we feel that inhibits the possibility for freshness and spontaneity. We build the arrangements around Aretha's conceptions. It's her musical approach, the way she lines out a song, particularly the way she accompanies herself on piano. The second break, you make this, the first and the second beat. The third time you make the first, second, and third beat. It's a matter of feeling and it's also a matter of sound. Uh, a lot of times where the band was right, I felt I was wrong or not giving or living my lyric enough. So we keep going over takes until we're both, you know, together. Until you smile, when you smile, you know you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, let us meet Miss Aretha Franklin. Aretha's acceptance started with the adults and worked back to the kids. And it's kind of strange because she has this little built-in shyness about kids as to whether or not they will accept it. Sometimes they seem nervous about me and what they really don't know is I'm a little nervous about them too, but before it's all over, we, we get together. They like me and I like them.
times we all get around the piano and work out a tune. Ain't no way. The tune that my sister Carolyn wrote, and she was trying to teach me. I didn't know how the melody went, and not being able to read music, she was showing it to me chord-wise on the piano and give me a general idea of what type feeling she wants on the tune. No, I put it uh, right up under the first one. I just broke two together oh, in the bridge, and then it sounds pretty good. It sounds. It sounds. It sounds. It sounds comes out to check out his rhythmic and mathematical observation of what's happening. routines together, usually rehearsing to my records. Never a dull moment, and then I 
Like every time Aretha's ever walked on stage, I've always felt that I knew just about what she was going to do and how she was going to do it. And that lasts up until the moment she opens her mouth. And then it takes a complete change. And uh, I'm very glad to say never for the worst, but it's always been just a little above, a little different from the way everybody had expected it. Yeah. 